Hello and welcome to this up close interview. We are here with John Hood. He is the Okemos superintendent. Mm -hmm. You started in January. January 1st, yep. Thank you so much for joining me on this program. It's my pleasure. I'm so glad to have you here. And you're kind of on the heels of this national niche ranking that came out. So yeah. what better time to do an interview than that? Yeah, wonderful. Um, you know, Okemos was ranked number two in the state mm -hmm. by 2019 Niches Rankings, number 107 across the country. Yeah. Um, you became the superintendent in January, but you've been with the Okemos Public School District for quite a while. Since I started as a teacher intern, yeah, so it was 24 years. 24 years. Yeah. So I've been with the township for 20. Yep. So you've been with the school district for longer. Yep. How has your position transitioned and changed over time since you started 24 years ago? Yeah, so I started as a teacher intern. I was fortunate enough to be placed by Michigan State to do my, you know, student teaching as they call it in Okemos. And I was placed at Chippewa Middle School and really fell in love with the community. Um, I'm not from Michigan. I'm from upstate New York originally. Okay. Came to MSU to get my degree. Mm -hmm. Decided to go in teaching. My mom's a retired teacher now. And um, when I got placed there, I, I knew this was a place I could spend my entire career. The community, the teaching staff, the kids, um, also welcoming and supportive of what we're doing in public ed, and it's a wonderful place to work. Now, do you have kids of your own? I do. Okay, and yeah. have they gone through the school, the Okemos school system, or elsewhere? Or? Um, they, we live in Hazlitt. Okay. Yeah, we live in Hazlitt, so well, that's in Hazlitt a, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so, so are they in Hazlitt Public Schools right they now? Are, yeah. All right. So we'll have we'll have an interview with Hazlitt as well yeah. for their rankings. So we we won't steal. Um, it's, it's, it's Steve Cook, correct? Yes, it is. We, yeah. we won't steal his thunder. And they ranked very well as well. They ranked yeah. very well. They ranked 17th in the state. They did. And so we will talk. So they're going to an excellent education uh, system as well. Yes, they are. So my experience um, with Okemos and uh, teachers, since you know my boys went through mm -hmm. the public school system, is a very positive one. Um, you know, we have a few teachers who weren't our favorites, but when you have kids, you know, two kids that go through a ton of teachers through the school system, that's kind of expected. But, you know, 98%, 99%, you know, we're just absolutely in love with. Mm -hmm. um, and I never, we, I don't think my boys ever had one teacher who didn't try to help them, mm -hmm. who didn't reach out to me, who didn't spend extra time mm -hmm. with the kids. Is, is there some sort of magical selection process that, that Okemos public school system goes through to find these teachers who, you know, and I'm, I, I don't want to sound biased because I live in Okemos or anything, mm -hmm. um, but that's the experience I've had and I hear from most yeah. parents. Is there some kind of magical interview process they go through? I would say it's more about the culture that's been created in Okemos, the culture of expectation created by our parents and community and by um, teachers and administrators uh, and our students really that um, you know we know every kid is different mm -hmm. we know their needs um, the needs of one student may be very different than the needs of the other we know parents are sending us this the best you know they're sending us their babies you know mm -hmm. they're they want their the future all the doors open for their kids that can be opened and we take that very seriously so we um, when we say we try to work to meet the needs of all kids, we really try to work to meet the needs of all kids. And we have a saying, you know, all kids are our kids, not just a kid in my class that belongs to me as a teacher, but it's our collective responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, parents, teachers, administrators, students, other staff members, it's our collective responsibility to help um, do what's right for that kid and help them find success. How does the superintendent's office work with uh, the different public school systems to help uh, the students meet meet success and have success? So I think uh, the culture of a district certainly starts um, at the ground level, but is also influenced from the top down. So it's kind of culture yeah. of the district's formed by all of us together. You know, our mission statement in Okemos is together, educating with excellence and inspiring learners for life. And it's really unique to have the word uh, to start your school mission statement, be together. Mm -hmm. And I think that really sends the message about 
that, you know, I'm not here to compete with other districts. I'm mm -hmm. not here to, um, you know, blame parents when something goes wrong or blame mm -hmm. a student when they're struggling. It's, a, it's all part of continual learning and growth mm -hmm. for the students, for the parents, for the staff, for me, so we can be better yesterday than, than we are today. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so when you hear, I'm just going to go through a couple of these other rankings. Yeah. Um, so in the state of Michigan, so you were number two in Michigan for mm -hmm. overall public school system, number 58 for student athletes, yeah. number 64 for safety, number 68 for diversity, number 12 for best teachers. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I, I hear you say, you know, you don't really, you don't compete against the other schools and stuff like that. Um, and these rankings have come out. When you hear these rankings, or maybe you do your own self-assessment and, and ranking, um, and you see numbers like this, um, how do you, how do you meet with, or do you meet with teachers and administrators to say, where can we improve on yeah. this? I mean, those are certainly a point of pride for us, and uh, niche is one one metric. Yep. Um, and it's certainly what what we like about niche is um, they look at more than just academic outcomes. Mm -hmm. You know, they look at student extracurriculars, they look at the experience of our teachers, they look at our demographics. Um, so they look at really the whole experience in the community for the schools. Um, so when you're ranked number two, when they're looking at that, that makes us feel really good. Mm -hmm. That that's a uh, not just a ranking of the teachers or the administration, that's really a outcome of just collectively who we are. We've been, you know, top top five, um, top 10 over the past years. Yeah. And I think two is the highest we've been. Um, but when they break it down in those other metrics too, we, we do score quite well. Um, but again, our philosophy is uh, we've never arrived. You know, mm -hmm. our, our goal is to be better tomorrow than we were today. And that drives us. It dri we drive each other. Um, you know, just like we want great outcomes for our kids, we want great outcomes as professional educators, uh, educating the public. Mm -hmm. um, you know, any kid that comes to Okemos, we're going to do our best to give them the highest quality education that we can. And we take that very seriously, despite uh, the different needs and strengths of all of those students. So I'm super competitive. Yes. And when it came out, A, yeah. super you know, proud. proud yeah. But B, I said, how are we going to beat that number one? Yeah. <laughs> that number one school where I'm not going to name them. Yeah. Um, but I did think that. Mm -hmm. We won't ask you if you thought that or not. But I, kn I know that you and the school system is always looking at to improve each day. Yeah, we are. And it's it's what we would expect out of our students and our staff. So we expect it out of, out of ourselves. And, and it's the expectation from our community. And... Um, it's not just the expectation, but there's support there to make it happen. So it's really, um, you know, our teachers and our administrators work together. There's not the us versus them mentality. Like we're in it together. Our parents are problem solvers with us. You know, if, mm -hmm. if we're struggling meeting a need, they'll come in and volunteer or help provide a resource or give us some ideas. Mm -hmm. So it's really the best in public ed is that is that togetherness. So we feel support from each other. Um, doesn't mean we always agree. There's hard conversations that we have, but the one thing we do agree on is we want all kids to be happy, want them to feel safe, want them to be successful in whatever they want to do in the future. There was. I went to a different high school. I didn't yeah. go to Okemos High School. I went to a different high school. And I often felt blamed or judged and not really embraced if I had issues mm. or I didn't feel like teachers or administration tried to see me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I had that same feeling as a parent with, with my, I didn't at all have that feeling as a parent with my kids. Um, anytime they were going through something, if I went to the school, the school was there um, to help them out. The teachers always embracing. Um, what did you learn Doc, Dr. Ash was there for a while. Yes. Um, I'm sure she embraced you mm -hmm. and uh, the baton. And I, kn I know um, Elena Zachary Ross was there. She was mm -hmm. there for a year. She was. Um, and then Dr. Ash came back mm -hmm. and Trump and, until they found you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Mm -hmm. um, how, what, what words of wisdom did she give you or what, what did she pass on to you, if anything? Well, I think it's um, Dr. Ash has been incredibly supportive of me personally and professionally. 
she knows me. Um, she's known me for, I mean, two decades plus. Mm -hmm. So she knows how um, my personal strengths and weaknesses as well as my professional. And that relational trust that we have um, to help move me forward in my own learning so I can help move the district forward is, uh, is, a, is a very special thing, uh, especially with a boss. You know, mm -hmm. someone you wanna impress, but someone who is also evaluating you and your performance. Um, but it goes beyond just Dr. Ash and that we all mentor each other. Um, that's what drew me to the district as an intern was, I mean, these, these veteran teachers mm -hmm. took me under their wing and taught me how to be a good teacher. And when I wasn't, they let me know. Mm -hmm. um, when I was dealing with some health issues, they were there to help support me with my health issues outside of school, help me write lesson plans and be successful. So there's this real cohesiveness that we're, we are all in this together and we're all going to help each other be successful. Uh, and there's a level of expectation of excellence that comes with that that um, is so foundational to the culture um, that really drives us to be successful in our professional lives and in our personal lives. Did you ever see yourself in this position? I um, certainly had aspirations. Uh -huh. um, I love being a teacher, and when people still ask me, I still am a teacher. It's just a bigger classroom. Yeah. And it's wonderful to be in a position to help um, teach those that are teaching others um, so I can have uh, a wider impact. Mm -hmm. So um, I try to get into the schools as much as I can and still connect with kids and staff. Um, but I do spend a lot of my time with administration now helping them because um, we are all teachers mm -hmm. and we're here, you know, they say to teach is to learn twice. Mm -hmm. um, and we, I think that notion is true throughout Okemos too, where we're not only teaching the kids, but they're teaching us as well. And you have to be a role model. Mm -hmm. How many students does Okemos have right now? We have about 5,600, yeah. 5,600? Yeah. Okay. And so there's around 1,400 at the... High school, school or yeah. something like that. Do you know how many, this, this could be a hard question, yeah. do you know how many student athletes you have? I don't or? offhand mm -hmm. um, know how many student athletes we have, but I do know uh, Mr. Childress has done a wonderful job in promoting student athlete. Mm -hmm. So looking at students and making sure that they're um, valuing their education and that they understand what it means to be role models themselves. Um, in the school and community, because we got kids that look up to them from mm -hmm. elementary school on, uh, and they do represent their families. They represent our community when they're on the court, and he's done a wonderful job. He's amazing. Um, he's done a wonderful job mm -hmm. helping. And I really don't like him right now for yeah, leaving I us. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Um, <laughs> helping them um, be successful yeah. and helping the spotlight find them um, so they can show what they know on and off the court. You know? That's going to be tough to replace him. Yeah, we're starting that process now. He's going to be hard to replace. We certainly wish him the best, and he's done a remarkable job kind of um, moving our vision for student athletes forward mm -hmm. uh, and also community partnerships and upgrading our facilities. Um, it's been a lot of a lasting impact for years to come. How hard is it on these kids to balance? They have you know they're high achievers. Yeah, they have they have sports. They have um, homework. They, some of them have jobs. Yes. Um, they have band, choir, orchestra, chess, mm -hmm. other things that they're. Uh, does the school district work with them on balancing all of that? We are, and we're starting to work more and more on that. Um, not only developing students that are you know, actively involved in those activities, but students that can set appropriate limits, uh, develop healthy self-concept and he healthy relationships, uh, have healthy um, mental awareness mm -hmm. as well. So um, I will be working with our counselors and our social workers as one of my superintendent goals to really look at the social emotional health of our students mm -hmm. and staff. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on kids to mm -hmm. achieve yeah. Um, there's a lot of pressure on kids to be the best they can be. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be a good thing, but also giving them um, the skills they need to be able to cope and manage stress is equally as important of a life skill to make sure that we're teaching kids. Because uh, we, want, we want healthy, ha happy, productive kids, not just productive kids. We well, have know? a lot of assemblies. Mm -hmm. For, for the students, uh, for yeah. mentorship type assemblies, for, for uh, motivational 
um, inspirational yeah. types of things, um, and extracurricular activities that relate to those do. types of things as well. Yeah, and and our students are heavily involved in planning those, mm -hmm. so um, their voice is heard and we're re reacting or being proactive because of their voice in helping meet the needs that they're bringing to us too, which I think our high school administration, I mean, all of our administration, our principals do a great job in valuing that student voice. Because uh, sometimes adults try to solve student problems yeah. when um, we need the student's voice to help help inform us. It's good to walk, help them yeah. walk through it. And exactly. Try to solve it themselves. And they need our help and our guidance and our scaffolding, but um, sometimes we try to solve it without them when um, they're much better at finding the solutions. What's your graduation rate? Uh, it's over 95%. Over 95%. It's, yeah. yeah. And you have a high percentage of students who take AP courses? We do. I couldn't tell you the exact percentage, but a very high percentage, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then do you know what percentage goes to college after, after they graduate? It has to be up. high yeah. if you're number yeah. two ranking. Well, it, and it is. Um, it is high. But we want, and, and we have students that go to Ivy League schools that really put together impressive resume in Okemos, not just with their academic record, but in all the activities yeah. and their leadership roles and being student athletes and drama and music and the arts. We value all of, all of those things. But we also want to value um, our students that are going to the Career Center or going mm -hmm. into vocational mm -hmm. schools, going into the trades. Um, you know, we know we are. You know, we need we need we need all sorts of workers in our society. Yep. can live happy, productive lives. So we want to make sure when we stress college and career ready that we're stressing college and career ready, because uh, some of our students are ready to go uh, be productive members of society and mm -hmm. get trained in a vocation and and make a great living that way, and that is also valued um, in our community. Do you see the school system changing over time where they're transitioning from high school to college and, and the types of preparatory classes um, that are taught in high school? Certainly the rigor over time in my 23 years, the rigor of what we're um, teaching kids pre-K to 12 has been greatly increased. Mm -hmm. um, and that's due to a combination of things. Um, certainly we're accountable for state standards on standardized testing. Um, but there's also the expectation that we're going to do our best to um, prepare kids for life in the real world. And mm -hmm. as you know, uh, things are very different out there than they were 20 years ago. So we got to make sure our game is... We may not is, need to teach them how to write yeah, a check anymore. It's evolving so they <laughs> yeah. have the skills they need to, to compete out in society as well. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to add? It's an honor to be a part of a school system and represent the Okemos schools, um, a school system that um, has, has the students we have. Um, I'm really proud of the diversity we have in Okemos. I was um, surprised to hear yeah. number 68. 68. Did that surprise you? Or? Uh, it did not surprise me. Um, you know, the, there's a lot of misconceptions about the diversity in Okemos. There are. And uh, who are our students and who our, who our community is. And, I'm really proud of the equity work that we're doing. We have an equity plan um, where we are truly trying to address the needs of all of our students mm -hmm. in a very broad sense of diversity, um, not just based on race, but including race, religion, sexual orientation, mm -hmm. um, gender identity and expression, um, socioeconomic status and more, where we're trying to take ourselves to the next level and, and um, make sure that our staff is equipped with the skills to make sure all students feel valued, res valued and respected mm -hmm. and that we can help them all develop that trusting relationship that's needed um, for the learning process to occur. So it's really a point of pride in Okemos and I think has made a huge difference in where we are and sends the message about where we're going. Any other challenges or um, things you're facing into the future? Uh, we do have... Um, uh, bond issue coming up in May. Oh, okay. Um, that'll be on the ballot May seventh. There'll be an election, um, and What's that, that will for? that will help um, with um, security, uh, transportation, technology, um, some capital outlay, flexible seating, 
Um, is this a renewal? Is this new? And also a facility up <laughs> facility upgrade to Bennett oh. Woods. Oh. Um, adding uh, four classrooms and a multi-purpose room. Really? Because we're having we're we're. It's really grown over there. We are. Um, our elementary schools are very full. Yeah. Um, our we're we're approaching capacity with a number of the new neighborhoods that have come online. Yeah. And with some of our older neighborhoods turning over, people selling their homes. So, so. Um, We'll see how the community weighs in on that. That's good. It means more students are coming into the area if you if they're full and yeah. if you're looking to build out a little bit more. That means that because you don't want to you don't want to drop in student population. And and we did years ago. Um, you know, last we're we're coming out of you know ten we were ten fifteen years ago closing schools. I was yeah. the principal at Edgewood when Edgewood was the first school to close in Okemos and Wardcliffe closed as well. Mm -hmm. And then we reconfigured to be more efficient because we had to kind of tighten our belts. And, you know, we used to have Kinawa be a six, seven, eight and Chippewa be a six, seven, eight. And now Kinawa is a five, six and Chippewa is a seven, eight. So we really uh, were, you know, rode the wave of um, the downturn in the economy and birth rates being down and it's coming back up now, mm -hmm. which is wonderful, but also affords us some challenges we have to work through. Yeah, I've heard uh, some people talk about, you know, possibly, you know, some parents or um, or uh, people who own some homes possibly opening up Wardcliffe. Um, yeah. What's it being used for now? For Wardcliffe? Is it, yeah, is it being rented out? Is it being leased so out? So Wardcliffe is leased out um, to part of, I believe it's Community Mental Health that has um, some directed programming for, I don't want to mis misspeak, but I think some. Um, like autism related services there okay. and part of the building. So you're bringing in some revenue from that. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing for the budget. Okay. And Wardcliffe's a wonderful community. I yeah. know East Lansing addresses, but Okemos Public Schools as a principal there for five years as well. You were. I was. So I've made a lot from of stops. When? What year? Oh, 2002, okay. I think. 2002-ish. One, okay. two. Um, and My aunt lived across the street yeah, from Wardcliffe it's Elementary. A great, it's a great community. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we certainly value our Wardcliffe residents. Um, the reason we're proposing building out of Bennett Woods right now is we just don't need a whole school. Yeah. Um, well, those we whole neighborhoods, school, we'll I mean, at, at one time, Hewlett Road had nothing. Yeah. And then you had Champion Woods and then College Fields. Exactly. And then those other four neighborhoods or whatever they are. There's like seven new neighborhoods on Hewlett are. Road alone. Yeah. Um, and I remember when the schools came to the township board and said, we need, we need some new residential neighborhoods yes. coming in here. And well, that's not farm then <laughs> sold, then sold right. off and became a neighborhood. Yep. And it certainly helped the school district. It did. And the same thing's happening in Hazlitt with, you know, new neighborhoods, you know, opening up and, yep. and I'm sure more will come. Yeah. Especially with their ranking too. And we're based on students who are per pupil funded. So we get, you know, our, our allotment per pupil. So the more kids we have, you know, the better. We just want to make sure we have the uh, facilities to accommodate them so they have a good learning environment as well. What is your school? Do you know how many school of choice kids you have? Um, I'd have to look that up, but, okay. um, you know, Okemos has always done um, a pretty conservative approach to school of choice because we don't want to be in the position where we have to add staffing because we've added school of choice kids. Mm -hmm. We try to fill in the gaps where we might have open seats, mm -hmm. um, which has worked very well for us. Yeah, someone told me that there was a limit on the number of school of choice kids that schools could have, and I had never thought of that before, but it would make sense. I mean, I guess you couldn't just open it up carte blanche to, however, but I don't, I don't know how that We're how that required works. to advertise the number of openings. We will um, we'll take um, K-12, and then districts can take more than they've advertised, but not less. Okay. So you'll see um, advertisements come out in the spring. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anything else? I swear I won't ask you yeah, 20 no. questions after yeah. I ask you anything yeah. else. No, it's a pleasure to be in Okemos, and um, I'm honored to be the superintendent, and um, it's, a, it's a fabulous place to work. Well, we're glad you're, yeah. you're here, and Thanks. we're glad that you came out to do this. Thank you so much. Thanks. And I want to mm. thank you for watching. <laughs>